Welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm your host, Buckning, and today we're going to give you an update at the beginning of the week um, to show you what we bought last week, as we always do. And uh, yeah, there's a lot going on this week, so we'll probably talk that, about that in a later video. But if you're new to the channel, welcome. This is where we put $100 a week into a tax-free savings account to build a dividend portfolio right in front of your eyes. And if you're not new, welcome back. So as you can see on the day here, uh, last week, uh, portfolio closed out at $17,158.17. It was down $360.94, down 2.06% for the one week. Uh, we were down $788.56, down 4.39% for the one month, down $764.10, down 4.62 or 4.26%. For the three months, down $355.00 and 47 cents down 2.03% for the one year. We're down $939.51, down 5.19%. And for the all, we are still up $1,247.22, up 7.84% since starting this portfolio. As you can see, we had $10.62 in cash <clears throat> and the positions we bought, of course, as you know, every single week, we do buy VFV, which is the Vanguard S&P 500, ETF. So ticker symbol for that is VFV closing out at $95.09, down $1.27, down 1.32%. Uh, we do have 18.38 shares, total position value of $1,748.59. Our total return since starting this position is $19.94. And it holds about 10.2% of the portfolio. As we go down to the buy, it is just a fractional buy. We try to put in $25 every single week, of course. And we were able to purchase 0 0.2624 of a share at the price of $25 and rough or 20 or $95, about 25 cents, uh, which brought our cost to $24.99. As we move on, the other position we bought was actually a financial institute. And I know there's a lot of financial news going around what had happened in the States there. And we'll talk about that in a later video. So Bank of Montreal, ticker symbol BMO.TO, uh, closed out at $122.10, down $3.32, down 2.65%. We now have 14 shares, total position value of $1,709.40. Average price of getting in is 108.20 and holds about 9.97% of the portfolio. And since owning this position, we have made $194.63, unrealized, of course, um, of 12.85%. So on the Friday there, we did purchase one share at $123.59. And thanks to no fees of Wealth Simple Trade, um, that was the cost of it was $123.59. So we'll head back to the main screen here for you guys. And uh, let's go ahead and update trackyourdividends.com which we always do every single week to show you the progress that we're making. And so as you can see on the screen here, portfolio yield, this is the tracker dividends without the updated positions that we just purchased. Portfolio yield for us is 4.15% yield on cost. So 4.15 is the cost of building a portfolio as it stands that day uh, without the updated positions. Our yield on cost, thanks to dollar cost averaging is 4.46%. Annual income was at $702 per year, of course, divided quarterly, um, and that is before we update the positions. Next, when we do update the positions, you can see portfolio yield still sits at 4.15%, and our yield on cost, thanks to dollar cost averaging, has dropped us down from 4.46 to 4.45, but our annual income has increased to $708 annually, of course, divided quarterly based on what positions you hold, of course, it's not divided by four always. Um, it will uh, be paid out depending on the positions and the weight of the positions that you have in your portfolio. Okay, so that's trackyourdividends.com, completely free to use. I don't pay for their services. I just like to use it to track um, the potential dividends that will come up for the year. Next site here is ShareSight, which is a site I do pay to use, but I like to use this one to show the overall performance of the portfolio. So as you can see here, capital gains on this portfolio is $167.27, up 0.99%. Dividends, 
so capital gains appreciation is another word for this portfolio because it is a tax-free savings account so don't worry about paying capital gains because a lot of people um, put those words together or you connect those words as capital gains as paying taxes don't worry if you have a tax-free savings account that's just the way it's labeled dividends $131.97 gives us a 0.78 percent return currency gain because we don't do hold U.S. stocks in this portfolio is $63.91, um, 0.38% in performance. Total return is $363.15, up 2.15%, and that is the performance of the portfolio for the year. And so that is everything that we purchased last week. That was the performance of last week. And beginning this week, <clears throat> don't worry, um, to be honest with you, there was something that did happen in the states there and uh, came to a bank defaulting but i wouldn't use that as a connection to you know what is to come down the road who knows what's going to happen and just so you know that is a regional bank quite a large regional bank of course because it is in the u.s the u.s banks are not as regulated as canadian banks so if you are a canadian watching this video don't try to tie yourself to what's going on in the u.s um because we are heavily regulated and we do have certain criteria when it comes to banks. I say we, but the banks have a very strict criteria that they have to follow and they're typically audited on a regular basis. Uh, and so one other thing is I just want to go back here and if you haven't used the referral code down below, we did receive a referral. So thank you. Um, we'll show you guys how to use this. So if you deposit some money, they'll give you some money as well. So we'll go ahead and review this reward. We got five dollars, so we'll deposit that. That'll go into the non-registered account. Um, we won't browse stocks there, <clears throat> but just want to give thanks to those. Oh, it doesn't even show it anymore. That's unfortunate. It used to show, you know, who used that code. But if you use that referral code down below, it helps you, helps me, and uh, thank you for continuing to support the channel even in that way. And that's pretty much it for the video, guys. So don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And again, don't worry too much. Look deeper into what's going on or what has happened in the States with that bank. And uh, don't think that this is the start of a recession or the start of 2008, the financial crisis all over again. Really be cautious when you do that. And, and of course, there are a ton of nuances. Do your own research. Do not panic because that's what the majority of people will probably want to do with all these headlines, of course. So yeah, again, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and we'll definitely see you guys in the next one. Bye.